episode is brought to you by Setting and Scoring Financial Goals, the book by yours truly and my co-author, Chris Schaefer, who talk about finance using soccer as a metaphor in order to explain how money works for you. So welcome to the Soccer Life Balance podcast, and this is our movie edition where this evening we will be talking about the movie Goal, The Dream Begins. Uh, we've got with us tonight uh, Scott Phillips and Luke Urich, and we're going to be talking about a movie that uh, has all of the had all of the uh, possibilities of being a, a great soccer movie. I after rewatching it the other night, I I'm kind of tempted to just bash all of the bad stuff, but at the same time, like I. I've watched this movie so many times because of the fact that I use it in my classes as a Spanish teacher. So I like her certain aspects of it. And so we'll hopefully I can maintain my positivity and everything like that. But, um, you know, basically can you give a little rundown as to how you got introduced to this movie? Luke, I'll start with you. You know, where did you see goal for the first time? Okay, so I saw Goal for the first time in either it was either my sixth or seventh grade um Spanish class. Senora Lashavecki uh showed it to us because I think she was um tired of like teaching us conjugations and stuff. But um yeah, me and uh my friend Mamadou Ba sat next to each other in class and uh we loved it because they were like so- we love soccer and there were people we knew in it. So yeah, but we didn't really pick up on a lot of like the problems that it has but that was how i got introduced to it and scott obviously uh you and i are a little bit older than luke but uh you know how did you get introduced to the movie Uh, oddly enough it it came out in 2006 and i didn't watch it until 2023 so this year but similar to luke uh being a teacher since 2011 i would overhear this movie being played in the world language wing, which was right next to our office. So that was like the holiday movie that a teacher would play on in Spanish class. So yeah, similar to Luke, it's, it's all school-based and similar to you, Pete. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, despite the fact, all right, so let's get into the plot a little bit and, and the, the background behind the movie uh, and then we'll move forward from there. So, you know, as I said before, like this had all of the possibility of being a really great movie. Um, FIFA was behind it. Uh, Adidas was behind it. Uh, as you can see, like the, the product placement of the Adidas shoes throughout the movie and things like that. And the fact that they were using a Nike ball, but when they set it down for the kickoff, the Nike symbol is not uh, shown on camera. So there's all kinds of little things like that. But basically, it's the story of Santiago Munez, who is a uh, Mexican kid from who lives in Los Angeles. And just through happenstance, he ends up getting seen by this scout in uh, on a Saturday uh, game, and basically the scout tells him, oh, I think you can make it as a professional, and if you come to England, I will get you a, I'll get you a trial with Newcastle United. And so then he goes to Newcastle, and he tries to make the team, and it's it goes through like a, a bunch of different trials and tribulations where, you know, if if he would have just been a little bit more honest about his situation, he probably wouldn't have had as hard of a time. But he ends up, you know, going in and making it onto the first team and he scores, a, a you know, an important goal at the end and everything like that. So it's got all of the trappings of the uh, or the cliches of of the. Uh, of the big sports movies. So, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, what are some of the key, like, I don't know, scenes or memories that you have of this particular movie? What, it, what's really stands out to you from, uh, from the movie and we'll get into the positives and the negatives, but let's, let's go with, uh, you know, what, what's your favorite scene, uh, out of the movie? Um, well, I'll start, I guess. Um, my favorite scene when I was in sixth grade is when he's in like the club with um 
what's it called with his uh Gavin Harris and uh David Beckham and uh was in Nadine Zidane show up because I it's it brings back a fond memory because like I remember me and Mamadou like knowing who they were like we lost our minds we're like oh my gosh like they're in this movie like we're watching the in Spanish like so cool and there were a bunch of girls in the class who called us losers and uh <laughs> Senora Lasha Becky <laughs> yelled at them. So I always have a fond memory of that scene, even though it's not really like it's about like the playing and stuff. That that always brings back good memories. So that's my favorite. I gotta say, I feel like my favorite, oddly enough, is is when he first arrives in in England, flies into England, and they do this like little tidbit montage it was like a rocky-esque sort of like training montage i mean what a, a um, advertisement for like traveling to europe uh, i can't honestly know for sure if it was actually filmed in in that part of newcastle or if they just found him running on a beach and the, you know the waves breaking on this wall i mean it was it was like this epic rocky rocky moment that i loved um yeah, that was, I think that was probably my my favorite part. It has nothing to do with dialogue or anything like that. I just thought it, it was like one of those those feel-good moments. Yeah. And, and you know, since you, you chose that one, I, I think that's a great th- a great scene with, you know, the water crashing. They've got the, the big music in behind and everything like that. So uh, a great scene. It really doesn't make a heck of a lot of sense. You're about to go on a trial then within the next few hours oh, oh, and definitely. you're going out to do a, like a five mile run on the beach or something like that makes absolutely no sense. But I completely, you know, cinematography wise, I 100%. Yeah. You know, it am, was almost like you. they, you know, they, they scouted locations and they said this, this needs to be in here. <laughs> yep. Exactly. <laughs> make it fit. <laughs> yeah. So uh, my favorite, one of my favorite scenes is, uh, is actually in one of the reserve games, uh, McGowan, who is the center back who hates him uh, throughout the beginning parts of, of his playing at the club. And, you know, Santiago gets fouled by this player from, I forget what team they're playing against. I think it's Sheffield Wednesday or something like that. And McGowan on the next play takes out the guy who, uh, who fouled Santiago. And he's like, I thought you didn't like me. He's like, I, I, you know, I have to make sure that I'm taking care of you because of uh, my sister thinks you look like Antonio Banderas. I don't like that though. That whole, like I'm doing it for my sister thing. I like it from the, you know, Hey, I'm your teammate and I'm going to look out for you and stuff like that. Um, So that's one of those scenes that even though I'm not a huge proponent of that type of uh, play, especially, you know, at the high school level (laughs) where I do my, most of my coaching, I I like the concept of like showing that, that side of things, because a lot of the other stuff uh, is extremely cliche. You know, you're talking about all of the, uh, all of the, you know, normal sports, uh, you know, things that you, you do, you, you know, talk about the coach giving the speech about, you know, the name on the front of the shirt is more important than the one on the back and things like that. So you go through all of, all of those uh, things over and over again. Um, What characters do you like or dislike? I mean, just, just take it to the top, the top or the bottom, which, uh, which of the characters do you most like, you know, stand out to you? Hmm. I got to say, I think his dad, um, very unlikable guy, right? And part of that's intentional, but you'd think that his dad would cut him some slack once he starts to believe in his son that he's on the trial in England being successful. You think that would turn him, but he was a little bit too curmudgeon for me. And uh, I, you know, we could dig deeper into his motivations about taking chances and risk in life but um the appropriate risk but yeah that that seemed to me like he was a very unlikable dude intentionally i like the grandma i like the grandma yeah she, why because she, she's the opposite of the dad she like believes in him and like it helps him get the plane ticket and the bus ticket and like helps him like facilitates his dreams as opposed to the dad who like and also she's just kind of a funny character so Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i if if i had to pick a character because like you know you got the obvious ones that like you know Kuno becker as uh santiago munez like he's the star of the show in theory but uh you know i'm i'm not 
huge into his his like personality or anything like that. I I really don't buy the uh the star power from him. I liked Glenn um a lot, you know, the the character of the guy who's fighting for, you know, the dream of this kid and everything like that. It, it, I think that one um was probably my favorite of the uh, uh he was like a linchpin that like held the whole entire story together even though he, he wasn't like some grandiose uh person in there. So it was definitely um you know, he was probably my favorite character out of the uh out of the people that that show up a bunch. And I do have to give a shout out to to Gavin Harris, who is the star forward at Newcastle, just gets signed. I mean, early on, I'm thinking, all right, Santiago is going to come replace Gavin and Gavin's going to toss his, he's going to be a total jerk, toss his chance away with the club. And, uh, and actually later on in the movie, you find out that this superstar, Gavin Harris, actually brings up Santiago a little bit and helps him out. And then also a little bit on the flip side, Santiago helps Gavin appreciate. I actually liked that twist a lot. I think that the fact that they could teach each other something, I thought that was a, a cool, cool idea in the movie. Gotcha. Um, football culture. Now, as I said before, FIFA, Adidas, and all of that stuff, they both get involved in this. They put a lot of money behind the uh, the trilogy project, which we're really not going to talk about the trilogy all that much uh, as, because of the fact that we might try and go down that road later. Although I'm not sure if uh, sitting through um, the, I don't know what the right way to put it is. Uh, but anyway, the, the sequel and the, and the third movie, which has nothing to do with the first two, um, you know, figuring out that whole entire thing. But, you know, what are some of the fo football culture uh, things that in here that really stand out to you? Like, you know, what is what does this movie s give to a soccer fan or possibly, you know, as we're seeing with Ted Lasso and Welcome to Wrexham and stuff like that? What were some of the things that, you know, as a non football fan, you could take out of out of this movie because of the fact that that's what it was trying to do. It was trying to be the calling card for bringing soccer to the United States to a certain extent. Um, It's just a fun movie, I th in my opinion. Like, I don't think it's all like that outstanding, but like it's a good like it's a decent like it's an overused story but like it, it gets the job done like uh everyone especially americans love like a good like um like rags to rich or riches story so like this movie kind of provides that and for like the casual like american soccer fan gives you some pe people you know like sedan maybe or like david beckham and like it, it it's just a, it's fun and like it's it's easy to enjoy even with like how you can get nitpicky and stuff like that with some of the things that happen but it's just fun mm -hmm. yeah I, I don't know if i want to get uh i'll get nitpicky in a second I, I i agree with luke i think it's uh it's a great feel good story and as long as you don't have these ultra high expectations you're you're gonna watch um you know a, a similar sports movie that you might see from this Zero to Hero. I I do think that the the I, I I think that a lot of the problems that Santiago ran into uh, about high stakes games and training and fitting in and having someone believe in them like Glenn Foy. Um, I think that is something as a soccer coach myself, I see quite a bit in my athletes, which I I think is. It was cool. It was cool to to kind of take a step back and see like, all right, these these kids, this game, whatever the, the state game, state playoff game, they might have those same feelings of I don't want to mess up. I don't want to let teammates down um, and, and kind of crumbling in the moment. Right. That's what Santiago, I think, deals with a little bit. So that was that was a cool, I think, realistic thing that you see just in a, a, any level of sport, which I think was nice. Mm hmm. Yeah, uh, obviously, like, you know, as as a lay a layman soccer fan or, you know, somebody who's really into the game, there's different things that you can take from this. Uh, and like, I think if you if you weren't to know anything about uh, about like international soccer in the EPL and things like that, this 
this gave you one team to like you know kind of hang your hat on even though like newcastle goes through a bit of a nosedive a little bit after this movie uh in going down to the championship and everything like that but i i think that one of the things that um you know in america we try to know who to root for and unfortunately that usually ends up in front running and things like that but i think that the uh they did a good job of introducing the concept of like here's newcastle there is a team out there that you could pay attention to and everything like that and the fact that alan shearer is in the movie and stuff like that that's actually the biggest like for for me the the two uh celebrity uh cameos that are most important for me are alan shearer and uh and the singer from acdc um so those two guys showing up in the movie is probably more important for me and alan shearer because of the fact that like one of the things they did do because of the fact that um they had fifa and uh adidas involved and everything like that a lot of the footage is real game footage which is great from the one perspective you know like uh you see several different uh, uh shots where it's 100 percent the players in a real game but the problem is is that the juxtaposition of like when they switch over to the actors and stuff like that it's just kind of horrible oh it's a step down <laughs> it's, to say the least. <laughs> yeah well to say the least and you know i don't know if this is the right time to get into like the uh nitpicky type of uh type of stuff um, what I planned on doing was, uh, you know, kind of going with a goal differential, positive, negative on like positive scenes and negative scenes and trying to keep like a little bit of score on like, all right, so there are positive things that happen throughout the movie and then there are negative things. What, you know, <laughs> where does this this movie as a whole kind of, um, you know, kind of uh grayed out if you're if you were keeping score of like all right well this scene was extremely positive this uh this scene was extremely negative uh and and coming up with some kind of a goal differential on it so you know like i think that one of the positives definitely give the you give a goal for the realism of some of the uh some of the play like you know some of the uh, game footage is absolutely awesome and then I got to give the negative then though of the goalkeeping in this movie is absolutely horrible. <laughs> Anytime so there is that. a goalkeeper in and it, it's uh, the worst is like at the, uh, towards the end where there's the penalty kick and the goalkeeper dives out of the way of the ball. Not even like, you know, a, I'm trying to guess he just dives out of the way. <laughs> Oh, he it, was it, trying his best. <laughs> <laughs> You're yes. not there. You're not there. You're not him. <laughs> Easy to make fun of him, but so I've got an even score at that point. So Luke Scott, do you have a, other positives or negatives that you would put on so that we can come up with kind of a score for the game? For a positive, I can definitely think of uh free kick scene, like where he takes the free kick and scores it. I thought that was very like realistic and like I didn't at least like the goalkeeper's enough like out of the way to like where you can't really I think he just does like a this like um on it or but like it's still believable because you can't really see him. So like it, that was a good it's a really good shot. So I, I thought that was very positive. Um a negative for me is just some of the shots that Santiago takes in training. They're not really, uh, a lot of them are weak. And uh, one of my favorite scenes of the movie is like, um, he's talking with the coach and he's like trying to prove something. And then like, he like says something to the coach and he turns his back and he takes a shot on an open net. And it's just like the weakest thing ever. <laughs> he's like, yeah. And Santiago's kind of just like, look at me. And then like takes the shot and then it's just, the weakest thing you've ever seen so that there's a lot of those in the movie but i think they kind of add to like the comedy of it which like makes it more enjoyable in the end so i don't know it's kind of like a positive and a negative but yep so point. far we're even at a zero yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i will say uh boys I, it's it's not even fair to say nitpicky because nitpicky is 
you know, there's there's enough realism where I think if you're a true soccer fan, you're probably saying this is a Nick Figgy, this is dead wrong. I think things like um uh when he's he's at first spotted by Glenn Foy at the the trial, uh sorry, on the on the weekend game that you mentioned earlier, Pete, he he makes a comment saying like, you know, oh, he lifts his legs too high when he runs. Like, like that's something that <laughs> soccer coaches tend to look at. Um, another one that I thought was was a bit unrealistic or or negative was the the lessons you know the soccer lessons like the ball moves faster than the player you know if you're on a trial for Newcastle United I think you've probably figured that out by now but I get it it's for the layman who who doesn't fully understand soccer so I get they're doing a little pandering um to be honest though even though I'm kind of two goals down here I don't think it takes away all that much from the the essence of the movie. I think to to talk about or bring in Ted Lasso. I think Ted Lasso obviously is a coaching movie where they soccer is kind of the side side part of it. I think it, this kind of flirts that line as well. So it actually is it's not terrible that it does these things, but it trends negative for me. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, I I think the you know. I'll, I'll go to the positive, uh, positive side of the, you know, like they do, um, they do actually try and like make it about like the person as opposed to like, you know, Santiago is a relatively endearing character. Like, you know, you want him to do well. He's, he's come from a hard life. You want him to do well and everything like that. So it's, it's a positive, it's the hero's journey you know, Joseph Campbell and everything like that. It's, you know, taking him, taking him uh, to the, uh, to the, through the whole entire thing of like, you know, call to action and everything like that. Um, I really like the, I like the scenes moving up to uh, him getting the money to go, like all the different ways that he's getting the money to go by like betting the guys at the Chinese restaurant and things like that. Okay. Uh, And then uh, the, you know, the eventual um you know the drama you if you will of like the father stealing the money and and buying the truck and everything like that i thought that like for a store you know for the story uh side of things not just the soccer side of things you know those are both relatively positive uh aspects to the movie it, it, it's well done uh, I really like the fact that they used all of the Newcastle like training ground and stuff like that. So, you know, the, those uh, those visual aspects of of the movie, I think, were extremely positive. So I, I'm I'm going like three ahead at the moment. <laughs> so I'm 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 trying to get us back into the positive because of the fact that like I know this movie is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but I enjoy it enough that like, I don't, I don't think that it's a negative goal differential movie and I'm just making sure that I'm not, I'm not going super uh, crotchety old man because of the fact that, you know, looking back at this, it's, it's real easy to say, Oh, well, this is not, you know, it's, this is not a particularly impressive movie because of the fact that, you know, it's got all these silly things um, that they, they worked around. And I, I agree with Luke, like, you know, the star power of a few different, a few different players and stuff like that were really cool. And also like the, you know, for lack of a better term, training montage stuff, you know, I thought those were all really, really positive. So I'm going to, I'm going to put us two ahead for the moment because I'm being an extremely positive person at the moment. <laughs> Listen, I'll follow up and I'll say, um, I think, I do think that the the real struggles he goes through are are probably pretty real for a player. I actually think they do a good job of, of putting Santiago in positions where, all right, he's on trial. All right, he's got to prove himself. Hey, you're going to be tempted by um, fame. You're going to be tempted by, you know, people that want something from you. And, and I actually think that the movie does a pretty good job of, of putting that. So I'll, I'll throw some positives up there for that. All right. We'll go three ahead at that point. Luke, you got anything else? Oh, I just can't stop thinking about the scene where they keep cutting to like the shot of him hitting his face in the mud. I, I don't know. I just like that. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I thought, I thought it was funny watching that over and over again, but that's not really, uh, like, 
so- super like soccer intelligent like opinion but i yeah, enjoyed well, that well i mean bo- basically we're we're all we're although we're looking at it from a soccer perspective we're also looking at it from just a movie perspective you know and so i that's definitely one of the reasons why i i wanted to go in the route of you know adding in some of the positives because again like i i don't think that this movie is a bad movie by any stretch of the imagination but it's also not the the best movie in the world you know like uh going back it you know i'll i'll throw out the I'll I'll take off one goal for inaccuracies of like, you know, and Luke and I talked about this when we were watching. It's like, there's no way Gavin Harris, if, if that was a signing, like not that he got released by his other club, but that was a signing because they say that a few times that he signed for 8 million. Well, they couldn't do that with the number of games that are left in the season. So it doesn't add up. That it that that would be the January tra- transfer market, and then they're going to try and get maximum points from their last few games. It's like that; just none of that adds up, you know, with regards to the time uh, time uh, frame. And also, Santiago, based on the fact that he's on a Mexican passport, he wouldn't be able to get a workers' permit in order to play in England without having a a certain number of uh you know appearances for the Mexican national team and everything like that that's what Tim Ream had to go through in order to get uh signed by Fulham is the um is the FA needed to know that Jurgen Klinsmann was going to start playing him in the US men's national team so that's one of those like the there's a story and you know you're trying to stick to the story but with FIFA and all of the people who were soccer brains behind the story really probably could have done a better job of like you know closing up some of those holes yeah. well i and think that's them oh no you go luke i think that i think that's them expecting like anticipating that their audience is going to be like more like um clueless americans who like have no idea what's going on and they would obviously see nothing wrong with that it's like oh like yeah like like there's a trade deadline in football but like i, I don't know that's after like a while so like it's like them expecting that like they're not going to get a ton of soccer fans but then you end up getting a ton of soccer fans because it's a movie about soccer and like it's got a bunch of premier league teams in it and then that just ends up turning them off of it so it's complicated yeah i agree i think that the movie stayed focused on on what it should have been which is the 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 rise of this this young player and I'm sure people will nerd out over the, you know, the transfer details and the trial and the timeline. There's four games left and yet they play like 12 reserve games in the season. You know, it's, I'm willing to suspend my, my soccer knowledge and beliefs for Santiago's sake. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. For Santiago's dream. (laughs) Yep. So um, we obviously uh, got the, the score. I have the score line at, three positive right now is that something that we feel comfortable with this is a a plus three goal differential uh as our first movie that we're grading is that uh, yeah. a, a relatively comfortable number yeah yeah i'll give it a plus three okay i think if we talked about it for longer we could find more things that like it would be like a five or something like that but yeah i'm i'm comfortable with three you're comfortable with a three i feel okay. good about three <laughs> all right cool um so a few uh a few like other questions like does this movie and this is kind of like taking off of the rewatchables that we uh listen to from time to time is um does this movie work with any other sport? Yeah. It's like the same story. It's like uh it's the well they it's a very similar story to a bunch of other sports movies. So yeah. You could totally be like Oh, like I'm a football, like I'm a really good athlete in like England, but and then like this American football like coach is like so in England for an unexplained reasons. Like, oh, like he's a heck of an athlete. I like I I was used to be a scout for the Detroit Lions, and I and I want to like really like re-enter my hat into the ring and like as a scout. And that's like you, it it's it it works for anything. Yeah, I think this is yeah like a 
I think this is a more successful Rudy. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so absolutely. Yep. Uh, was this movie really more successful than Rudy? I don't think well, so. Well, the movie was more successful. I think Santiago <laughs> was more successful than Rudy <laughs> oh, okay. could ever dream. <laughs> oh, okay. Got you. You're talking about like actual sports talent, et cetera. Oh, et cetera. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, Santiago <laughs> reaches, uh, you know, a top four club and Rudy, he gets carried off the field. That's nice. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> um, the uh, – how does this sport uh, how does this represent the sport does i know we have it as a three as a movie um but how does this uh how does this uh movie represent the sport does it represent the sport of soccer well does it represent it poorly what's the uh what's the thought process there i, I think it does a good job of of representing it well and i think the cameos um kind of give it a little bit of authenticity honestly having these two three uh star players and alan share you know i i think it actually i think it does become a good representation a decent representation of the sport in my opinion other than the goalies being like atrocious <laughs> i think it represents it like pretty well yeah yeah i i think that again you know the backing that they had from the different uh entities i they they had more i think there was more in the tank that they could have figured out how to do better. But overall, I, I think that they, they hit the, you know, hit the major points of like what it is to be a soccer, you know, player, fan, whatever, you know, if you don't know anything about soccer, this is a, a decent place to start it, it you know, with a, a narrative story about the sport. And then if you're a, you know, a big dork about soccer, seeing those uh those people especially in the timeline like we're talking about like the t the early 2000s 2005 2006 uh when this movie came out and was you know I saw it on DVD the first time um but the the timeline it, soccer wasn't you know this huge huge juggernaut that it is you know you were starting to see the EPL on TV a lot more and things like that um as opposed to now where you can you know get a game pretty much every single saturday um you know this was a calling card or an attempt at bringing in more soccer fans and i think it did it did a decent job of hitting most of the most of the highlights but um you know still again needed needed a decent amount of uh of work um the is the movie too cliche like uh are there too many uh, we already talked about the the jersey on the front or the name on the front the uh of the jersey is more important than the ones on the back like are there too many uh sports clichés in there or is it just that's kind of something that you can't avoid at this point because of the fact that clichés are there all the time you're you're going to use them at some point <laughs> that's tough i i think with a lot of sports movies you're probably going to end up with a lot of sports cliches so i th i would say it's probably on par with a lot of other sports cliches um maybe a little tired and but you know. yeah well i mean you've got the name on the front name on the back the father who uh has never seen his son play Yes, yes. Which at uh, the end, I, I, that was you lost me at the last scene. I was like, woof. Yeah, the the uh, the extremely talented player that nobody even knows exists. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, uh, and all of a sudden he uh he he makes it in. Um, and the superstar with the fame that almost throws his chance away. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the the friend who gets hurt, who's uh who's. <laughs> you know, like his career is over and, you know, you got to have some kind of tragedy in involved in, in, you know, setting him straight and everything like that. Um, I'm trying to think of any other of the sports cliches, but anyway, um, so we were talking, uh, oh, and I just recorded the commercial for the uh, book while you guys were not. Oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> 
Shameless. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast was brought to you by setting and scoring financial goals. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Product placement. Yeah, when's that's that what, product game placed? <laughs> yeah, that's that's what uh, Adidas was doing throughout the movie. Now yeah. we're now I'm doing it. Um, mm -hmm. This should be. Uh, you should totally use the the dream begins in there. Yeah. <laughs> your your financial goals be let, let the dreams begin. Yeah, financial goals too. Living the dream. Okay. <laughs> Tonight we're talking about financial. <laughs> no, tonight we're yeah. talking about goal. The dream begins, and if you have financial goals, uh, and okay. you want to make your dreams. <laughs> uh, all right, yeah. there it is. Let's wrap this up. I got homework. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. So anyway, uh, we were talking about the sports cliches throughout the movie and everything like that. The other thing that's a little bit cliche about uh the movie, the love story. Is it necessary at all? How did you feel about the, you know, the character of Roz uh, throughout the film? What What are our thoughts there? I mean, it was whatever. She was nice. It added a nice little. Well, I, I actually, I wouldn't even call it a subplot. I feel like she's not really even present that much to make it like a subplot. But I don't know. It's just there. Is it really necessary? Probably not. But it's there and i didn't really hate it uh, yeah i'm gonna agree with luke i don't think it takes away from the story i don't think it adds to the story doesn't need to be there mm, sure who's to say who's yeah. to say I, well that's the thing is like i i totally agree with both of you guys it's the love story doesn't add to the movie it doesn't detract from this from the movie at all the thing that I really never got throughout the thing, and I know that like this is not a a film with hugely you know famous actors who are doing a great job of acting. I never really got any kind of a like you know oh my gosh she actually seems into him. It's it's like all very forced in the mm. in the way of like the mm. acting and everything like that. But you know. That's just me being uh, a little bit overly critical. Uh, you know, the the love story for me, again, could have been there or it was there. It didn't need to be there. It, the movie works almost as well without it there. Well, without her, you can't have that scene where he's like, oh, man, like I got kicked off the team. And she's like, why? It's like because I, I have asthma and I didn't tell anybody because like I, I thought it would be a big problem. And she's like, well no that's like that's not a big deal at all so like i don't know i thought that was kind of funny so without her even though she's not a very important character you get funny moments like get him getting his physical and like all that stuff but like yeah is it all necessary no but it's a little funny mm -hmm. gotcha um yeah i'm trying to think of anybody else that we need to discuss you know like Ultimately, the movie it does it does what you hope that a movie does uh, should do for you is it entertains for an hour and whatever you know hour hour forty five two hours or, or or whatever it's a decent soccer movie is it the best soccer movie uh, that has ever been made we are going to try and find that out over the next however many months that we end up doing this um, so as we go through each soccer movie, hopefully our, our goal differential grades actually become representative of something. And, you know, we figure out how to, uh, how to discern what, what's quality and what's not, uh, and all of that. And, you know, for me, the one thing about this movie that like rewatching it is I'm trying to make sure, and that's why I think that it's important that we have Luke on this podcast is certain movies I think are going to come back for me as like nostalgia like i think the next movie we should do is victory with uh sylvester stallone and all of that stuff for me that one hits home because it's a whole bunch of important things like you know pele and uh and sylvester stallone being a the goalkeeper and everything like that but uh, when we're looking back at these movies i don't want it to just i, I want to take them at their face value more than Oh, well, I remember when I was, you know, 
14 years old and this was a really important movie to me i i want to you know actually take them for what they're what they're truly worth not just you know me having the nostalgia factor I am not I am notoriously not a huge fan of victory. So this will be a fun one. <laughs> and I might fall somewhere in the middle. Who knows? Yeah. It's a nice little gradient that we have. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, guys, for uh coming on and talking the uh through the movie. And we'll continue to try and do this from time to time, break down uh soccer movies in order to figure out what's the uh what are the goals and what are the what are the goals against and hopefully figure out uh you know what what the what is the quality that uh and you know how do the movies rate as opposed to uh you know uh, put or when put next to each other and figure it out but thanks so much for listening and we'll see you next time <laughs>